Good afternoon. Um, we're very glad to hear, uh, here to be at the APHRS to be able to show you some hard specimens. But first of all, the, the, what I'm going to show you is the endocast. Uh, can we zoom out a little bit so we have the whole endocast in view? Thank you. If you I'm not sure that we, we need to have that picture in the corner. <laughs> Can we, can we get rid of that picture in the corner? I think it's more important for people to see the, the whole um, the specimen than to be seeing the picture. Okay. Now, you can't actually see the relationships of cardiac chambers with a heart specimen. Therefore, I have made an endocast uh, meaning that I filled in the heart specimen with some sort of sealant, and when the sealant has set, I've removed all the heart structures. So we're now looking at the heart from the front, and you can see how the left and right heart chambers relate to one another, because looking from the front, we don't see much of the left heart structures at all, because they are more posteriorly situated. So, But what is striking is that we have much of the right heart covering the front part of the heart, and we have the right atrium sitting to the right side, but then we have the left atrium sort of more or less behind the right atrium. So it's not directly, the, the two chambers are not directly side by side. And neither are the ventricular chambers because of the curvature of the ventricular septum. We see looking up here, that sort of wraparound relationship between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. We see very nicely at the moment the right atrial appendage versus the left atrial appendage. Very different kind of shape. We've got the right atrium here, right appendage, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. On the left side, we have the left atrial appendage, and I have to turn the endocast round to the left side to show you the pulmonary veins coming into the left atrium. This structure, of course, is the coronary sinus, you know, the continuation of the great cardiac vein that we see coming around, and it's passing underneath the left atrial chamber. So from the side, for the side aspect, anyway, this is your left uh, lateral kind of perspective. We can see this relationship between the right ventricular outflow tract versus the left ventricular outflow tract. See how the two ventricular outflows are crossing over each other. See how the left one goes towards the right shoulder, whereas the right one goes towards the head. The other feature you, know, you note of a normal heart is that we have the aorta. If I stand the heart on this apex, very non-anatomical, but you do that in your imaging, you can see that the aorta is sitting right in the middle of the heart. It is behind the aortic uh, root or the aortic valve. It's behind the subpulmonary area, the pulmonary outflow tract. And behind the aorta lies the right atrium and the left atrium. And of course, the plane of the atrial septum. So we have the plane of the atrial septum here which, if you look at the heart from the front, the plane of the atrial septum is not actually going directly anterior-posterior, but is sitting more obliquely orientated. And of course, right in front of the atrial septum, very important feature for, for people intervening in the heart is that you have, relating to the anterior part of the atrial septum, the back side of the aortic root. Now, if I turn around to the back from the underside, you're looking from underside now, you can see the relationship between left and right ventricles and the coronary sinus here with the inferior vena cava. So this is the region termed the flutter isthmus, isn't it? That's running between your tricuspid valve and the entrance of the inferior vena cava. So if I turn my attention now to a heart specimen, you 
this one here. Let's have a look inside. Zoom in, please. This front of the heart, so we've got the front surface, the sternocostal surface, the apex of the heart. We've got the right atrium, left atrium over there. Turn around. We see this right atrial appendage. Uh, please don't switch the camera, just stay with this one, thank you. We got the right atrial appendage. Here, the front part of it, the tip of the right atrial appendage. Here's the superior vena cava coming in, and here's the inferior vena cava coming in, and it has been cut across. Now, do you see this fatty area here? At the junction, the border between the superior vena cava and the right atrial appendage? This fatty area fills the area termed the terminal groove or sulcus terminalis, and this is approximately the area of the sinus node of the heart. Okay? So we've got the, the uh, point or the apex of the right atrial appendage here, and more laterally, anterior laterally away from it, will sit the sinus node. And what is the corresponding structure inside? We cut into the right atrium. Here we can see, thank you, we can see the entrance of the superior vena cava. We can see the crystal terminalis beginning from the medial aspect or septal aspect and crossing this way and coming down to the entrance of the inferior vena cava, which is in this region. So this is the crystal terminalis and along the way we have this pectinate muscles, okay? So the pectinate muscles line the, the lateral wall of the right atrial appendage. But can you see already how thin is this right atrial appendage wall? In between the pectinate muscles, I put my finger underneath, can you see that? It's so transparent that I would say you can read your newspaper through this, uh, these thin areas between the pectinate muscles. And here, looking on to the septal aspect, what can we show you? The fossa ovale, see? The floor of the fossa ovale, sometimes it can be a bit aneurysmal. If you've got a PFO in this heart, it would be in this region, yeah? It would be a sort of more anterior calflet kind of position. Pull back here. Ah, thank you. Move a little bit. See the coronary sinus orifice? And pay attention here. You see the thin structure I'm picking up? This is the eustachian valve that's guarding the entrance of the inferior vena cava. Again, see how transparent it is in this heart. So we've got the eustachian valve coming into the eustachian ridge the orifice of the coronary sinus, the attachment of the septal leaflets of the tricuspid valve. So we are, in fact, looking onto the area of the common or typical flutter isthmus, aren't we? See, you're pulling back from the tricuspid valve insertion back over here, which is a smooth part of the right atrium, the vestibule, and back towards the eustachian valve. Okay, so your typical flutter isthmus. Note what is this structure? The right coronary artery, isn't it? Yeah. So the, the, the distance varies a bit, but on this heart, I don't know, it's uh, maybe about three millimeters away from the right coronary artery. The, the septal isthmus or paraseptal isthmus for slow pathways would be this region again between tricuspid valve insertion and the orifice of the coronary sinus. So coming forward over here then, you have delineated the apex of the triangle of cock, haven't you? Yeah? So this is the area, the, the cardiac surgeons call this the tiger area, and so should the electrophysiologist, I think. But over here, we've got the right ventricle Note, note the thin wall of the right ventricle in the normal heart. If we move a little bit over here, Joe, thank you. 
the wall of the right ventricle is thin, but at the apex, right at the apex here, it is even thinner, okay? So if you go digging around with inserting your leads and so on, you've got to negotiate through the apparatus of the tricuspid valve towards the, the apical portion of the heart. You're crossing all these coarse apical trabeculations or muscle bundles. Beware not to push too far because right at the apex of the right ventricle, in both ventricles, in fact, the wall is exceptionally thin. And coming up here, the right ventricle outflow tract to the pulmonary valves, to the leaflets of the pulmonary valve, supported by muscle, okay? Pulmonary leaflets supported by muscle. But if I try and persuade the leaflets downwards, we might just see some pieces of ventricular myocardium at the bottom or inside the sinuses of the pulmonary valve leaflets. But note also if you're working on on the focal ventricular tachycardia sites here, how thin that right ventricular wall tapers up towards where the pulmonary trunk uh, leaves the right ventricle. Turn around to the left side, I think. Can we see the left atrium? Here we go. The left atrium in view. It's pretty smooth on the septal surface because we don't have the fossa ovale rim, limbus. We just have the flat valve of the fossa ovale, okay? And up here is a narrow orifice or os to this structure. The left atrial appendage, isn't it? Okay? The pectinate muscles are more or less confined to within the, pec within the, the atrial appendage on the left atrial side. And here we are looking onto the mitral apparatus. We've got one leaflet here, the so-called anterior leaflet, which is deeper. And then we've got the posterior leaflet, which is, has been cut through here, a continuation around. But note the multiple cordi tendini inserting to these two groups of peppery muscles. If you need to negotiate your catheter underneath, the mitral leaflet to get at, say, the ventricular insertion sites of accessory pathways, you need to be aware that not to get entangled, obviously, amongst these cordi tendini. But what have we got here? Here's the coronary sinus, isn't it? Leading back into the right atrium. Look, note the thin wall of the left atrium. Of course, it receives the pulmonary veins. Pulmonary veins, usually, in the, when um, heart specimens are taken away from the body, we tend to lose much of the pulmonary vein. We may be fortunate to find one or two pulmonary vein orifices. I think this is the left vein, uh, maybe a conjoined vein before it enters the atrium. On the right side, uh, one here, right upper, right lower. Coming down here, we see this area. You see the, the left atrium actually, although the, its wall is smooth, it's quite thin. And it's, not, it's quite complicated, complex in muscular arrangement actually. We may see some pits and dens in it. Sometimes towards the front of the, the left atrium, you might find a a dent that will almost likely take you outside of the heart and to the back of the aorta. This is the aorta, okay? Look into the left ventricle. This very thick wall left ventricle, isn't it? But this heart has not been cut into well towards the apex, so it gives you the, the illusion that all the way down, you've got a very thick left ventricular wall, but that is actually not the case because if you go down here, it's actually not that thick. I'm not going to cut it here. <laughs> John is, trying, is encouraging me to cut it. I don't know if you can see any transillumination through it. No, maybe not. But whilst we've got, got the torch, whilst I've got a torch in the hand, why don't I show you the membrane septum, okay? Isn't that beautiful? Nice membrane septum, a little bit 
a little bigger than expected. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Exaggerating the memory receptor. OK, so it's here, OK, and it's crossed by the, the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve, dividing it into, see, the interventricular component underneath the tricuspid valve and the atrioventricular component between the right atrium and the left ventricle, OK? What else can I show you? Oh. OK, crossing the atrial septum, we've got the limbus of the fossa ovale, all right? Superior vena cava, and you're coming down, you're feeling your way. OK, you, you drag much more smoothly than I do with the probe. OK, you will come down, a change in topography, and hopefully you drop and you tend and you go across. Try and tend through the thin region, because if you, tend, if you go through the thick part of it, you may well exit the heart, the cardiac chamber, OK? Remember what I said about the aorta sitting anteriorly? Well, there are usually some pits down in this region, which can trick you, like in this heart. You come down from superior vena cava, you might just drop there and think you are there, but if you go here, where are you? See, that's the aorta already, yeah? See, if I push hard enough, I will be into this space here, the transverse pericardial sinus, isn't it? If I push further, I'll be into the aorta. Probably you get away if you've just got a tiny little thing going through, maybe just a needle. But if you have anything thicker than that, you might run into a bit of a problem. So we've reviewed the atria, we've reviewed the ventricles. I think I would like to spend some time taking questions from the floor. Is that allowed? Because my task today is just to talk about normal anatomy, OK? I'm not going to, to uh, transgress into the, other sp the following speakers' talks. So ask me about normal cardiac anatomy. If you want to see anything special. You're very silent. You can ask in Korean. The natives can ask in Korean. I'm sure Joan will be happy to translate. But whilst you're thinking of your question, I want to show you this beautiful preparation that Joan has prepared from his archive in Seoul, OK? We're not looking at the epicardial surface of the heart. We are looking, actually, on the fibrous pericardium. And he has preserved the fibrous pericardium to show the course of the phrenic nerve. See how it's running down, accompanied by an artery and a little vein, running just on top of the fibrous pericardium, like this, OK? It takes various courses. In this case, it's more anteriorly. The course is more anteriorly. So it would be relating to the great cardiac vein and anterior descending coronary artery that's coming down here. Sometimes it takes a more lateral orientated course. I think that is the more common course. It goes over, then, the obtuse marginal artery an obtuse vein. What about the right phrenic nerve? What's that relating to? Okay. Can we see the, <laughs> the right phrenic nerve? Oh, yes, we can. Here we go. Here are the, the right pulmonary veins, the right upper and right lower pulmonary veins. And here's the right phrenic nerve. See how closely it runs relative to the right superior pulmonary vein. Okay. That's the superior vena cava coming in, I think. Yeah. Any questions? Yes? <coughs> uh, Peter Novikov from Moscow, Russian Federation. Uh, can you please show the ridge between the left uh, superior and inferior pulmonary vein? The ridge between the left superior and inferior. Oh, OK. Can we find? Uh, boop, 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 boop. Can you find a dissected heart specimen? 
Oh. <laughs> Maybe I could steal one of those. <laughs> this one? Ah, okay. All right. This one here, okay. This is beautifully cut into uh, long, uh, long the long axis of a heart, okay. So it gives you like your four chamber imaging plane, like four chamber, maybe periston or apical four chamber echocardiographic plane. Here we see the back side of the left atrial appendage. See if I, if I do like this, okay. Keep your eye on the two halves. That's the orifice of the left atrial appendage or the left atrial appendage, or that's the left superior pulmonary vein, which a, a part of it is here, part of it is there. So this is the left lateral ridge or left atrial ridge, okay? But back here, this back part here is the so-called ridge between the left inferior pulmonary vein and the left superior pulmonary vein, okay? So you're, you're, you were asking about the ridge between the superior and inferior pulmonary veins. It would be this one here, this one here, okay? Which is not very well shown. But most people are more interested in the left lateral ridge, which is this thing. It's not actually a ridge, it is an infolding of the left atrial wall. And within it, you might find the, the remnant of the vein of Marshall, the ligament of Marshall. Okay? So here and here together. Other questions? Yes, please. Suzuki from Japan. My question is, uh, Krista Tamini Rice is just like she character, you know? Uh, yes. And horizontal, I call this horizontal part and vertical part. Yes. Vertical part is uh, CT. They call, um, or they often call, only vertical part is CT. But uh, I want to say that Whole, whole C character is uh, all C T. Yes. Is it okay? Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. The whole C. Yes. Uh, and uh, the beginning of the C is uh, from the septum, right? From close to the septum. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, the impulse. Uh, uh, your teacher Anderson describes that very big C. He uh, demonstrated. So um, C is uh, flatter circuit it itself. Do you think so? The uh, septum to because you know uh, posterior wall is thin, so the conduction velocity is slow. But big C is a big muscle. So the conduction the, speed is very fast. <coughs> so the uh, ra rabbit, rabbit is faster than tortoise. I'm, I'm sorry, but it, I don't want to contradict, OK? But anatomically speaking, the C that you call the crystal terminalis has muscle bundles that are running more or less parallel together. And that gives you the faster conduction. Whereas the posterior wall of the right atrium from the C towards the septum is the intercaval area where the muscle bundles are running in this fashion. Okay? They're not so well aligned. So you've got a fast thing, the C, and you've got a less fast area here at the back of the right atrium. Uh, generally speaking, it runs vertically or obliquely and or parallel. Yes, but not, not in the same direction as the C. You follow? And the pectinate muscles, again, come in at an angle to the C. The C is coming this way. The pectinate muscles are coming this way. Right? In some patients, very vertical C is... They may have very vertical C. Very bad. 
vertical uh, muscle. Very bad they muscle vertical. in the sea. Vertical. Some patients may have very vertical sea. You understand? Vertical. Very vertical sea. You mean? Vertical very... portion of the sea. No, he's no, mm. not. He's not. No, it's not. It's mm. not. No, I'm sorry, I don't. I don't understand uh, your. Ah, okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> yes, there are a few more questions. Let's get let's get them in before the time's up. And I have to hand. This is ligamental muscle and the, the from coronary sinus to the upper segment of ligamental muscle. He has so, so, so strange. What was the question? Translate. <laughs> yeah, okay. So can you show us uh, the, the, the pathway of ligament of Marsha? Oh, pathway of ligament of Marsha. Can we yeah. change the camera? Yes, thank you. Here we are looking at from the left side of the heart, okay? The left atrial appendage. This is the remnant of the vein of Marsha. In fact, it still is the vein of Marsha, but, but it is now called the left superior vena cava. You see where it's running? Between the left pulmonary veins, it's left inferior, yeah? And left superior pulmonary vein and the appendage, okay? Does that make sense? No, <laughs> got them dissected out. Rup. no. Microphone, please. Is, is this a persistent this left, uh, left side should be SVC? Yes, that's the left, persistent left SVC. Okay, that's right. And, uh, yes. Can you, can you, if can it you was not a patent, it would be the ligament of Marshall. Yes, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, so, uh, the per persistent to, to left side uh, to SVC is uh, so really a troublesome area of the ATR fibrillation. Left side, the permanent persistent uh, left side. Uh, Superior vena cava is a, a very troublesome area over atrial fibrillation. Yes, you, yeah. because it, it has musculature around it yes, to quite, an, quite a distance. Yes, and, and it the, has connections with the left atrial wall as well, the muscle. Yes, and the, yeah? can, you show, uh, can, you, can you explain about the, the, the range of those, uh, the, the muscle? Muscle layer of the persistent left side the superior vena cava? Well, we haven't actually traced the muscle layers, but we know that in looking at heart specimens, the, the wall is, is not thin mm. around the persistent left superior vena cava. It goes some fair distance up. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, but we haven't traced the muscular architecture. Sometimes we need to uh, go into the uh, PRS we see and uh, ablation. Inside yes. of the vein. Yes, yes, I think so. <laughs> yes. Was well, so there one last question? I think before uh, I don't want to take over the, the next session's time. Uh, could you please trace the course of the coronary arteries? Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, we got one. We got a heart beautifully prepared here, injected in. All right. So, here we have the right coronary artery coming down into the right atrioventricular groove and going around, okay? There are branches going up, branches coming down, and about, oh, I think 55% or 60%, the sinus node artery will come off from the right coronary system, one of the anterior atrial branches. And here we turn around to the underside, to the diaphragmatic surface. We continue the right coronary artery. See, it's giving the posterior descending, in fact, multiple branches, actually, and further branches to supply the left ventricular wall. So this is a right dominant coronary pattern, obviously. Okay? If you turn to the left side, 
can see the left coronary coming in, coming out. Um, not a very long left main stem. And then it bifurcates into anterior descending down here, giving the septal perforators, obviously. Sometimes we get the diagonals coming in. Um, there's one little one here. That's the circumflex artery. You see the relationship between the great cardiac vein, great cardiac vein ascending, there's a great cardiac vein, uh, interventricular vein rather, ascending, continuing into the great cardiac vein, and it's just crossing over the circumflex artery here. We continue the circumflex artery around, and we see the oblique veins, see the ob oblique marginal artery rather, and this is the oblique marginal vein. And this time, again, crossing over the oblique marginal artery. And here's the great cardiac vein continuing into the coronary sinus. And we, I think the, the circumflex terminated around there. All right? I've taken two minutes of the next speaker's time. My apologies. OK. We'll be, we'll be back. Oh, I'll be back tomorrow. Can I go ahead? Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. So, so today it's my great pleasure to have the opportunity to present my data in this session. So, I really appreciate to Dr. Seo and uh, Dr. Kim. So today I will be demonstrating at your ventricular conduction system. So, but, but uh, first of all. So today, I will be demonstrating, first of, first of all, microscopic observation. So because uh, I am a cardiologist, not anatomist, not a pathologist. So that's why so, uh, I, it's very important for me to, in the, the anatomy, in the chest X-ray or fluoroscopic examination. That's why, so for me, Important thing is uh, how accurately you can image with the structure in clinical examination. So first of all, I'd like to show you the important structure, membrane septum. So first, first let me, um, let's confirm this site. So this is a light atriogram. So membrane septum is here. So, okay. So, how about this area? Here. Okay. And next, how about the uh, AP view? How about AP view? So, membrane septum is here. Let's go ahead. So, here. This is membrane septum. So, this is uh, related to the conduction system. So, but the uh, most important thing is the, this point is here. In arterial phase, this point is just beneath NCC, RCC, commissure. Just beneath NCC, RCC, commissure. Okay? Here. 
So this is a membrane septum. And so to observe this aspect of the, the membrane septum or surrounding, surrounding structure, so we cut the human body along this line. So let me show you the sagittal section of the human body. This is a lateral view. This is a human body. This is a median line. We, the body was cut along this line. So this is a cross section of the body. Right side and left side. Left to right. Left to our right to left. So let me show you this uh, open square. So magnified view of, let me show you magnified view of this square. This is magnified picture. Right side and left side. So let me confirm the part of RA. So RA and Backside, there is a LA, interator septum, ovarphos, and IVC, SVC, right pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery just above the left atrial loop. So this is a right main bronchus. Here, RS. RI, LSPB, LIPB. So terminal crest is just goes down here. And the opposite side is here. So as you can see, the, the alignment of this muscle is this pectinate muscle. So here shows the septal leaflet and the anterior leaflet. So in these pictures, we, image, we try to image the AV junction. So let me show you this by using this image. So here shows tricus with anus and membrane septum is here. And this one is, this one is divided into septal leaflet arterial side and posterior side. So here shows central fibrous body, this and triangle coho. So this area is a atrial ventricular septum, atrial ventricular septum. That's why this, the back side of this area is LV, not LA. So this is a summary. RT, tricus with vanos, coronary sinus ostium, membrane septum, central fibrous body, and septal leaflet divided into, divided membrane septum into two parts, okay? Atrial parts and the ventricular parts. So, cohort triangle here. And here, Eustachian and leech and tendon of total is here. That's so why this is a atrial ventricular septum. So triangle, triangle cohort means so anterior side is septal reflex and posterior side is posterior side posterior side is tendon of total and base is CS and vestibule of Tricus with valve. This is triangle coho. So as you as you know, in this area, the, the AB node is located here. So and this fiber is penetrates central fibrous body, and just beneath goes uh, uh, goes down just beneath membrane septum. So this is a basal information basic information. So let me, let's confirm this information by using this 
material. So here shows, uh, as you can see, uh, you, can you can notice, septal leaflet, coronary ostium, ovalphos, superior cable vein. Here shows, uh, here shows terminal crest is here. This is tricuspid valve annulus. So, so, sorry. So, this is the opposite side. So, back side of the, this area. So, this area is just beneath RCC and the NCC commissure, as I said. So, this is a membrane septum, translucent area. Okay? And let me superimpose the AB node. So translucent area, compact AB nodes, and this fiber. This is a his bundle. This is a his bundle. So that a little, a little bit left side, this is goes up. This this fiber goes up. A little bit left side. So when I use, when I see this uh, his bundle, you can detect this area. So, and this is a membrane septum. And here shows the trigger with bad anus. Here, this one divides two parts of uh, to membrane septum into two parts. And this uh, membrane septum, central fibrous body, membrane septum is here, and septal leaflet is here. So this is a eustachian leech, tendomotoral, central fibrous body. That's why in, from this figure, from this figure, Tendom todaro connect to central fibrous body. But some cases, this, this uh, tendom todaro stop around here, not connect to, doesn't connect to central fibrous body. And here shows a cohort triangle. So that's why maybe I think you, you, maybe uh, you imagine this size a little big, I think. So, of course, so this is a, I repeated this case. And atrial ventricular septum is here. So, let me show you the content of the atrial ventricular septum. You, so, you always, so, ah, sorry, you. Insert the uh, catheter for recording of the his bundle like this. Uh, so how so at so at your event so as I as I you notice at your ventricular node is the in the atrial vent uh, atrial ventricular node AB node is located in atrial ventricular septum. Septum. So you always you always see this fact in echocardiogram. Echocardiogram, this one. So this is a four chamber view. IVS, interventricular septum, interventricular septum, and here, septal leaflet and antiomitral leaflet, septal tricuspid leaflet and antiomitral leaflet. So, but as you can see, so here, barbara annulus is that the level is quite different here. That's why this make one more septum. This one is uh, atrioventricular septum. So LV, over this side is RA. So in this, RA side, there is AV node. There is AV node. 
IBS, CBC. So this is a 3D CT. So when remove, uh, so four chamber, four chamber view is here. When you when we remove light ventricle here. So when add when you add so palmar and tricuspid valve in this picture here, septal leaflet, anterior tricuspid leaflet, posterior tricuspid leaflet. So here is the interventricular septum. So when you when you uh, examine the echocardiogram, this this figure or this figure, you always examine, you always take from from the echocardiographic findings. So the, this one, this picture is not is not good. This one is uh, correct. And here is atrial ventricular septum, and this at right side of the atrial ventricular septum, AV node is located. So this one, sorry. So the summary of the atrial ventricular septum, and here, and the septum, interventricular septum, and here, tricus, called, uh, terminal crest is here, and here is light atrial appendage, and here shows a sinus venarum, sinus venarum. So by the way, this protrusion is uh, left arterial reach here. So cardiac septum, there is a three cardiac septum, interventricular septum, atrioventricular septum, interventricular septum. So let's make a, let's make a material for, for observation of uh, atrioventricular septum. So we cut along this line and we turn, uh, turn, turn lift the trap and turn back here. Interventricular septum, interventricular septum, and this is the annulus of so call, uh, septal tricuspid leaflet, and this is annulus of uh, antiomitral leaflet. There is a septum. Here shows a atrioventricular septum. So please look at this one. This case is a slow pathway ablation case. This pathway, the slow pathway ablation case. This is a bleeding. Okay, and interventricular septum, oval fossa is like this, okay? Light atrial septum, terminal crest, and super vein, super, superior cable vein. And this, this bulging is a non coronary aortic sinus. So anyway, we, we uh, put the, both pictures side by side. Anyway, here, this area is here, okay? And this is a, an, um, an, uh, this is a, a little bit, oh, no, no. So we lift up, we lift it up until my reflect. So please look at this aspect. Non-coronary out the end, non-coronary cusp, retro-coronary cusp, right coronary cusp. Okay, and so finally, let, let me summary, let me summary of the cardiac septum. Cardiac septum is, consists of two components, every cardiac septum, interventricular inter septum, RV, RV uh, muscle and LV muscle. Atrioventricular septum, uh, no, interventricular septum, area muscle and area muscle. Interventricular septum is LV and 
RA. So electric, electrically, the, uh, there is a complete separation in, the, in this area by this fibrous tissue. If the electrically, if it does not, so the uh, excitation leak to here to here. At that time, this one is diagnosed as a WPW C type WPW. So this is a summary of the here and here. At the ventral septum is here. So that's why this area, this area at the ventricular septum and of our first, it's no, no uh, cohort triangle is located in at your ventricular septum. Okay. So, okay. could you change the picture? Let me show you the, at, uh, the AB junction. Let me show you AB junction. So, okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, let's. Review. Let's review the cardiac, uh, cardiac structure. This is a. This is the, uh, the neutral position. Okay, AP view. Okay, AP view. And you can see. So here, palmar trunk, alveolar flow. There is a uh, the ascending uh, ascending out the backside of this structure, light at the appendage, and here. Okay, let's rotate rotate clock, uh, clockwise. So here shows the uh, RAO. Okay, RAO. SVC, light at the appendage. And IVC is here. So this is terminal groove. So there is terminal crest, backside of this line. So an AP view and LA LAO view is here. Okay. And in this LAO view, LAO view. You always, you always uh, use this, this, uh, this view because this view can separate RV system and LV system. That's why you can image, you can image here. This is a septum, okay, and. Ero 60 and lala, lateral, lateral. Okay, and let's see. This is uh, the backside of the heart, and here. This is a left a posterior wall of left A2. And here shows a, here shows a pericardium. This is a, this is a reflection of pericardium. So 
this area is pericardial oblique sinus. If you injure posterior wall, the breathing, the breathing go into this area. So, okay, let me, one more, one more thing. So, left atrial appendage is here, okay, LAO. Left LAO is here, this is LAO. Left atrial appendage, when, when I insert finger between PA to between PA and left atrial appendage, we can insert smoothly and we can find here. This is a space. This space is named, this space is named pericardial transverse sinus. If you, if you give the damage to anterior wall, the breathing, the blood go into this space. That's why this space, this space is, the, this space is the between anterior wall to anterior wall and posterior uh, ascending outer. Okay, next one. And next one is here. So this is a neutral position. This is a neutral position. AP view, RAO view, AP view, uh, no, AP view, LAO. LAO, LAO, and LAO 60, and lateral. So in this material, we cut along the, uh, the RV, uh, RV's uh, outflow. So from here, so, LA, so we rotate to LAO and rotate and cut open here. So this aspect that Dr. Ho has already explained this aspect. RV at flow and is here RA, RV, RV in flow. So today, I will be demonstrating about around this area. Septal leaflet, anterior leaflet, and here, septal papillary muscle. So, okay, here, and So from now on, I insert, insert this flashlight into aorta and into non-coronary aortic sinus. Here. OK? Anyway, anyway, at the beginning of the, this presentation, I have, uh, I give you the information about this membrane septum. Membrane septum is located just between, just, just beneath N NCC, RCC commissure, okay? Here. You got it? Yes. Okay. okay, next one. Finally, so 
So finally, I will show you this four chamber view. Okay. This one. Neutral position. AP view. RAO. AP view. LAO. So in this position, we cut along this line. And we lift up and here and here. Okay? This one is this one is a four chamber view in echocardiogram. That's why echocardiogram, echocardiogram, the four chamber view of echocardiogram is so after cutting so after cutting that line and it looking at from lower to upper. Okay? And here shows here shows the atrioventricular content. So this here shows uh, the membrane septum. That's why this this point there is a his bundle. There's a his bundle. Okay. Anyway, today I I'd like to show you about the about the uh, the way of the way of the theoretic a way of theoretically understanding. So if um, so today my talk talk if you you um, use my talk. I'm very happy. Thank you so much. This one? I don't know. Oh, not, not this one. This one. Did you upload this to a speaker strategy? I upload. I love the file over there. This morning. Pardon? One moment. Uh, okay, good, good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Chao from Taiwan. Uh, sorry, because my slide is prepared. Okay, uh, because I, I'm also not a pathologist, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm so honored here to uh, present the data, but my job today is, uh, I think, is to make a brief review of the, about the atrial conduction system, special focus on the inter-atrial conduction. So, because beside me is uh, all the expert special, uh, Professor Ho and Professor Xiao. So I think uh, maybe they will, they will uh, do, do some uh, simple uh, dissection after my talk. Okay. Okay, so here, can, can we upload here? Um, which side? Um, okay, this one. Okay. 
sorry, uh, the connection. Okay, so um, understand the details of uh, inter atrial conduction, I think, can provide the important information for atrial activation and the during case treatment of SVT. And uh, uh, the inter atrial conduction defects has shown to be associated with a high propensity for atrial tachyarrhythmia. Uh, as we know, the inter atrial inter connection, including the uh, maybe four, uh, the, the, the four orientation. The first one is a uh, uh, back, backman bundle. I think it's uh, familiar for everyone. And the second, maybe the inferior connection is mainly uh, between the coronary sinus and the left atrium. And the third is the posterior muscle bundles. It's uh, mostly between the right pulmonary veins and the shuvia vena cava. Um, in addition, uh, some doctors say there's uh, some connection between the fossa, fossa ovaris and the right pulmonary veins. So this is the first example of a uh, uh, backman bundle connection. You, you, you can see here, uh, I want special thanks to Professor Ho's uh, pictures. Uh, Okay, you can see this uh, uh, backman bundle uh, is located uh, in the anterior wall between right atrium and the left atrium. And uh, the right, right ward branch is uh, close to the sinus node, as you can see here. And uh, a part of the uh, bundle go to the upper, upper right atrium. And uh, the left ward branch pass around the neck of the left atrium appendage. So uh, Dr. Lemery also showed the uh, Beckman bundle connect, uh, connecting the right atrium and the left atrium. And the, as you can see, this is a very clear Beckman bundle uh, here. And uh, it's marked uh, between the um, SVC and the left side and the left atrium. And in the panel C, uh, you can see the pin here to mark the right side endocardial projection of Beckman bundle. And uh, this, this, this mark is the left side and uh, endocardial projection of Beckman bundle. Uh, so uh, this, this, this photo also shows the uh, four orientation of a Beckman uh, involving the Beckman bundle and the nearby the bundles. As you can see the, uh, in the panel A, this is a typical uh, Beckman bundles, just as mentioned previous. You can, uh, this is the uh, interaction group. And uh, uh, in the panel B, you can see uh, the Beckman, uh, the septal pulmonary bundle with a zone of a mixed fiber here. And uh, in the panel C, you can see the septal pulmonary bundles arriving from this interatrial groove. And uh, they are beneath the Beckman bundles. So if you remove the Beckman bundles, you can see this bundle fiber septal uh, pulmonary bundle here. And uh, you, if you remove the septal pulmonary bundles, uh, the deeper layer with the septal atrium bundles uh, here, you show it very clearly, and uh, uh, has, uh, it has the three uh, major fascicles. Uh, the second connection is uh, located uh, uh, of the left atrium and the coronary sinus. Uh, this picture shows a particular case. You can see the, the, here. Here is the muscle bundle here. Uh, so muscle bridge from the left atrium open over light and run into coronary sinus. And uh, in addition, we can see uh, some fine bridges connect veins of muscle to the left atrium. Uh, in, in this paper, uh, they also show the uh, anatomical basis of connections between coronary sinus muscular and the left atrium in human. Uh, we can see the three examples. The, that shows the various left atrium and the coronary sinus myocardial connection. This is the uh, left atrium side. This is coronary sinus. In, the, in between, you can see the uh, thin and the discrete uh, um, myocardial fibers, uh, and uh, the, 
this is um, uh, thicker and the wider myofiber here. And uh, in this particular patient, you can see the very abundant muscle fiber between the left atrium and the coronary sinus. Uh, in the clinical, we can also uh, demonstrate uh, the electric uh, connection between the right atrium and the left atrium by the muscular of coronary sinus. So in this picture, you can see very clearly uh, this is the coronary sinus uh, caster. And uh, if you pass in from the coronary sinus uh, distal, you can see the uh, left atrium uh, activation waveform come, goes here, this way. And uh, if they have the coronary connection at the CS6, so you can see the waveform uh, connection from here and uh, go this way and uh, go this way, which you can see. Uh, so uh, frequently you can uh, demonstrate this uh, phenomenon in your case, uh, in your case step and uh, prove uh, there is a connection between the left atrium and the coronary sinus. Uh, this shows the posterior or uh, left atrium IVC connection. Um, you can see that this is uh, uh, Dr. Ho's uh, publication. You can see uh, the percentage of the connection here. Uh, and uh, this is the example. You can see the uh, connection. I think the posterior connection, um, this is anterior, this is posterior. It's uh, just m most uh, between the uh, vena cava and the uh, uh, right, right pulmonary veins. Uh, this case also shows that they, uh, in the panel A, you can see the thin bridge across the posterior left atrium, left atrium groove here. Uh, very, uh, you can see many tiny bundles uh, here. And uh, in this one, you can see a big bundle, a broadband bundle connector, inferior left atrium and the uh, right atrium. Okay, so uh, in, in this paper, they also show that the uh, multiple inter atrium bundle connection uh, between the posterior wall of the left atrium and the right atrium. You can see many bundles here. Okay, so uh, the, last one, the last one type is uh, uh, the connection from fossa varies uh, to the right superior palm vein. So uh, Dr. Pratanov uh, also showed nicely the substrate for intra atrium and the in inter atrium conduction in the atrium septum. Uh, it's an anatomy study on 84 uh, human hearts. Uh, he demonstrated the first, uh, the atrial muscle band in the fossa varus is isolated by fatty tissue, just like this picture showed. And uh, they are arranged along an uh, anterior posterior axis and uh, connected with LA myocardium. So uh, I also want to show the in vivo evidence of uh, interatrial connection. So this. Uh, uh, this elegant study uh, done by the, uh, Dr. Sakamoto, He's, he used the Kanai model to show the inter atrium electric connection. So um, they placed uh, to a multi, multi electrode mapping system uh, in the both atrium. You can see um, in the dog also, it, this is the muscle bundle and the anterior septum and posterior connection. Okay, so if uh, this is a sinus region, or page, you can see almost uh, uh, the, f the first conduction is from uh, exclusively from the backman bundle here in night dogs. And uh, if you pass in from the inferior, inferior left, uh, right, low right atrium, uh, it can be abort, then all go to the posterior uh, connection. And uh, if you pass in from left side, uh, left superior, Palm is all is also conducted through the uh, backman bundle, um, and uh, if you pass it from inferior palm vein, it can go upward, and uh, sometimes uh, it's a uh, go to the posterior connection. So um, this is a uh, uh, canal model, and uh, how about the human study? I think this is in uh, 2004 in circulation. Uh, they use the simultaneous by atrium, the non-contact mean before case the abrasion of atrial fibrillation. 
And uh, you can see uh, this is the, in the uh, human. Again, this is uh, a right atrium, this, this size left atrium. And uh, the sinus, in the sinus region, you can see uh, activate the right sinus node activated then through the back main bundle uh, rapidly conducted to the left atrium uh, here. And uh, they downwarded to the septum. However, uh, in the for, for some various area, the wavefront cannot penetrate into the left atrium. So um, they concluded that the atrium septum uh, activation is uh, discordant. Uh, it's uh, activated from here and uh, uh, the right side to IVC and the left side complete, complete its activation. Um, however, uh, this paper uh, showed that inter atrial septum conduction can be accurately determined uh, using the service ECG. So um, this may explain uh, in some patients maybe the P wave morphology have some variation uh, in general population. And uh, it may indicate the uh, different breakthrough uh, of the left atrial side. So uh, he shows three types. Uh, and uh, use the signal average ECG. Uh, you can see the, the in, in type A patient, uh, uh, this is the uh, connection from fossil virus, uh, the non -con the 3D mapping, you can see uh, the conduct from the fossil virus and uh, the ECG is uh, a different pattern. Uh, and uh, from the back main bundle, from the coronary sinus. I can show you next slide. So you can, they divided the ECG to the type one, two, three, and uh, you can uh, prove it. The type one, the SY is positive, Z is negative, is the most from the for cell virus. And the type two, uh, the XY positive, the, the Z is a negative positive, uh, this, uh, from the back main bundle. And uh, for the type three type ECG, uh, the Y, lead axis is positive, negative, and the uh, uh, lead Z is negative, positive. So P wave morphology derived from the standard 12 lead ECG can be used correctly identify the AOA breakthrough side and the corresponding root of inter atrial conductions. Thank you very much. Today, uh, we are uh, introducing the normal anatomy and some part of uh, uh, uh conduction system. But tomorrow, from 8 a.m., you can e examine those hot specimens in this space. So just visit here to examine the hot specimen from 8 a.m. to until 10.20. When we will start the second presentation session, uh, an uh, abnormal heart and uh, disease and normal heart again. <laughs> so uh, we have a very limited time today, so it's only 10 minutes left. So if you have any uh, question, it's time for discussion from now on until uh, 5 o'clock before we close it. So in that case, we can... Uh, Uh, we will demonstrate Bachmann's bundle uh, from the specimen.
just use the microphone. Um, the camera, can we get the camera again? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no? The camera can move, come on. <laughs> Um, the hearts have not been specifically dissected out for Batman's bundle, but I will attempt to show you um, where I, I, uh, the Batman's bundle would be residing. So we have here the anterior view, um, here the aorta, and here's the transverse pericardial sinus um, that the previous presenter put a finger in here to come out the other side, remember? Okay. So that's the superior vena cava, that's the right atrial appendage, uh, the tip of it, that's the left atrial appendage. The <laughs> with the tip taken off, sorry. Uh, Backman's bundle will be running here, all right? We can see, sometimes see some vessels going along the front surface of Backman's bundle, as we see here. I think this is probably a little vein structure going parallel. The plane of the atrial septum is just behind. We haven't dissected into it, but um, do you want me to dissect into it? I'm going to ruin, I'm going, you're going to watch me destroy the, the collection of soul, okay? Oh. He says, ouch. <laughs> okay, so here is the plane of the interatrial groove, okay? Can, can we see it here? Because the, these are the right pulmonary veins, right? See, I can cut a little bit more, boop, boop. Not to destroy the heart completely, just destroy a little bit, okay? In fact, you can already see some of the, the muscle bundles um, um, that the previous speaker has say, talked about connecting right and left atrial musculature. This is to the back side where the superior vena cava is coming in. You see little bridges already. But this is the main one. This is Batman's bundle, the main one, in front of the scissors. See? This structure here. I think you, you see, if you manage to get uh, an animal heart from the butcher, like a sheep or a pig, they, they are very clearly displayed, it, 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 it so happens. But in a human, usually we can't show it very well unless we carefully remove the um, epicardial fat. But this other heart, which has been cut in, oh, again through the long axis plane. Okay, this is more or less your echocardiographic uh, parasternal long axis or transesophageal long axis. So you go two sides like that, okay? Here we are into the left atrial chamber, the two sides of the left atrial chamber, and can you see this thicker part of the atrial wall? This is Batman's bundle. The left atrial wall is about this thickness, and then suddenly we have a hump of muscle over that. So this is Batman's bundle on this side. Where is it corresponding on the other cut surface here? Okay, here is very very thin. There's this left atrial wall is thin. This is the left posterior left atrial wall over here, corresponding to posterior left atrial wall here. Okay. There's a question for you, I think. Can you can you hear that? Okay. Uh, I I have no a uh, little knowledge about the inferior pyramidal space. So can you tell? Uh, can you show me that uh, space? And uh, can you tell me about the related anatomy? Sorry, the inferior pyramidal space, okay? This heart has been prepared in such a way that um, they filled in sealant into the, the atrial chambers, okay? We've got superior vena cava here, 
right atrial appendage, this is your right lateral view, inferior vena cava, and in fact, they have dissected into the interatrial groove. All right? And now you see the fossa ovale filled in with that sealant. Okay, so I'm opening up the interatrial septum. But underneath here is the inferior pyramidal space. This is the coronary sinus. Okay, this is the um, middle cardiac vein. We see a lot of epicardial fat, so this is epicardial space. The epicardial fat here, you will find the AV nodal artery going through here to get towards the apex of the triangle of cock. All right? So this is the relationship of the inferior pyramidal space. And why do we have that? If we have that four chamber cut again, you will notice this is not really far, you don't have further, deeper down four chamber, no. Uh, mm. I, have, I have to adapt, I think. <laughs> ah, because this one happens to cut through the membrane septum, okay? That's the membrane septum, the thin part here, the coronary sinus here, the inferior pyramidal space is just behind this right atrial wall, okay? In fact, uh, in speaking about the conduction system, people often refer to the area of the atrioventricular septum, taking it to be this part of the cardiac septum. But if we can zoom in really hard, zoom in really close, you will find that actually the ventricular septum, this is ventricular myocardium comes up here, and because of the, the offset arrangement between the mitral valve insertion, which is here, tricuspid valve insertion here, um, so this part of the ventricular septum sits between the right atrium and the left ventricle. So a lot of people do call this part of the septum the atrioventricular septum. But if you look more closely, actually, if, if I had a further, a deeper four-chamber cut through here, I can actually show you that we are cutting through the inferior pyramidal space because what we have is not a true septum, not a true atrioventricular septum as such, but the right atrial wall overlying the ventricular septum. Okay, so in other words, you've got a sandwich forming a so-called septum, a sandwich composed of the right atrial wall with epicardial fatty tissues and then the ventricular septum. So all that region is the inferior pyramidal space behind, which if I had a deeper cut of a four-chamber section, I can show you. And for the, for the more clinically orientated, this is your view, okay, by the way. All right? So it's time is over. So we will continue from tomorrow morning. So please uh, enjoy the rest of this program today. Thank you.